I think Axelar is amazing. And why is that? It's because it really reminds me of like Polkadot, but back then. And as a result of that, I think that its native token called AXL could hypothetically go to the price of $25 during this bull run, even though nothing I say is financial advice nor a guarantee. Now, why do I think that it could very well be, you know, somewhat of a polka dot in a sense? The reason for that is because if you take a look at polka dot, what is it focused on? It's focused on interoperability. It's focused on connecting blockchains together. And quite essentially, Axlar, it's basically something like that. You got to take a look at how when it comes to Axlar, it's a Web3 interoperability platform. It's quite essentially an open stack to connect all blockchains together. And this right here is very crucial, by the way, because there's a lot of networks out there, a lot of blockchains, but a lot of them, typically they lack something called interoperability. Now, what I mean by this is that many of them have a difficulty freely sending data and value to each other, which of course is a very kaka situation. I mean, let's just put some perspective into this, right? If let's say... I'm using an iPhone, but then I can't call my friend who's using like a Samsung, for instance. Let's say that's the case. Wouldn't that be like terrible? You know what I mean? That'd be a kaka situation. Now, of course, that issue doesn't exist. But then imagine if it did. I mean, again, could you imagine just how bad it would be, right? But then, of course, in the world of blockchain technology, because it's still, you know, relatively up and coming, it's still a major issue. So if you take a look at it again, there's many networks out there, many blockchains, and they do need interoperability. And keep in mind, it doesn't end here because, yes, there's a lot of blockchains, a lot of networks as of right now, but it's only natural to assume that there's more that's going to pop up in the future as blockchain adoption increases, as the attention for cryptocurrencies also, again, increases. It's only fair to assume that there's going to be more that's going to pop up. So, of course, something like Axlar, something like Polkadot, you know, it's going to play a very vital role. What I really like about Axlar is that, you know, it's not a project that's going to disappear when the fans or hype is gone. You know what I mean? Because it has an actual use case, I think it's going to be around for a very long time. Now, again, if you take a look at Polkadot, it's relatively kind of matured in a sense in terms of the size, right? In terms of the growth. But if you take a look at Axlar, even though it's on a small project by any means, it's still a lot smaller than something like Polkadot. So again, that's why it's giving me like Polkadot vibes. It's like as if I went back in time and then it's kind of like looking at Polkadot then. You know what I mean? Just at a much lower point. But even besides that, we have to take a look at this when it comes to Axlar, because a lot of people like to say it's caca, it's trash. That's not true. You take a look at how there's currently over 60 blockchains connected with Axlar, which includes Avalanche, Moonbeam, Say, Cosmos, the BNB chain. You take a look at even Coinbase's layer two network, you know, the base network. But even besides that point, you also take a look at Arbitrum, Ethereum, and many others. So yeah, that's how impressive Axlar is. I mean, Sometimes people like to say that, yeah, it's, again, it's trash, but no, I disagree. Now, also on top of that, Axelar so far has facilitated over $8 billion worth of transfers and even over 1 million transactions as well. So that's very impressive. You know, statistically speaking, is it the best out there? I would arguably say no, but it's heading up there, right? It's heading at a good pace, and that's what I like. Not to mention, you take a look at how, you know, it's already partners with Onyx, which is by JP Morgan. I mean, we all know that JP Morgan is absolutely massive. Also, you take a look at Microsoft. I mean, that's insane. Hashtag Bill Gates, right? That's impressive. Also, you take a look at MasterCard. When you take a look at Axlar, it may not be the most flashy project out there. It's not the coolest thing. It's not the most attention grabbing project. But again, it gets the job done and partnerships are A+. Plus. I mean, you got to think about this again, right? Do you think something like Microsoft or MasterCard would want to partner up with something that's like complete caca or trash? They're not going to do that. So this is a true testament to the, I would say, amazing fundamentals of Axlar and also its team, really, because we see many good projects out there, but the team can't really pull anything off. You know what I mean? But when it comes to Axlar, they get stuff done. That's the way you take a look at it. It's like, remember when Bill Belichick said to the Patriots or whatever, he was like, get the job done or whatever, do your job. It's kind of like that when it comes to Axlar. The Patriots, you know, they're not the most flashy team out there. They're not the coolest, you know, especially back then, right, during their dynasty. But I'm just saying, you know, but they won rings. They won Super Bowls. That's the way you take a look at Axlar. It's not the coolest thing out there, but it gets the job done. That's the way I view it. Not to mention, you take a look at on its ecosystem, there are projects related to NFTs, you know, DeFi, and as well as gaming. So, the ecosystem is not bad. You know, a lot of people like to say that, yeah, you know, when it comes to NFTs, DeFi, gaming, there's no potential there, but I think better days are ahead. You know, yes, the hype isn't necessarily the best, but imagine once the hype jumps back in again, 
So, you know, these projects that do again exist on XLR, when the markets do pop off, they could very well go along with the ride. So that's what I really like about Axlar. You know, it's not a bad project by any means. And here's the thing. Eventually, people, they're going to shift their focus because as of right now, people, they're heavily focused on meme coins and AI projects. And don't get me wrong. I do love AI projects and as well as meme coins. But I think eventually as the bull run becomes longer and longer, it's only fair to assume that people are going to start exploring other options. They're going to start exploring other sectors. And if you take a look at it, yeah, sure, there's Polkadot, there's Axlar, but within this space, right, that's focused on interoperability, there isn't necessarily that many good projects, if that makes sense. So if there really isn't that many good options, guess who's going to have a high probability to, let's say, have a lot more attention and FOMO? It's going to be something like Axlar. Now, again, Polkadot, I think, will always be the leader, at least for the foreseeable future, like in the medium term, I would say. But again, if you take a look at, for instance, something like Axlar, I still think it has its place. You know, it's like, for instance... In the car market, there's not only just like one brand, right? There's not only like two or three. There, I mean, there's a bunch, you know what I mean? But then it doesn't necessarily mean that the number one is the only one that achieves success. Like also the number two, three, four, ten, if that makes sense. So if I take a look at Axlar, it's very amazing. And even though, let's say, it doesn't have like a dominating market share, I still think it's pretty impressive nonetheless. And here's the thing. Sometimes people like to say that, yeah, AXL, $25, what are you talking about? This is crazy, this is insane. But if it were to go to that price, considering current circulating supply, market cap would be around $20 billion. So it's really not too crazy. I mean, you know, Dogecoin reach over $80 billion, right? Shiba Inu reach on $40 billion. I'm not talking about, you know, AXL going to like a $100 billion market cap, let alone like even 30 40 or 50 You know what I mean? So this isn't like crazy. That's the way you take a look at it. And people keep saying that, yeah, the bull run's over. No, I disagree. I mean, I think the bull run is really, if anything, still in its beginning phases in a sense, because you take a look at how, you know, Bitcoin hasn't even reached the price of $100,000 yet. And even historically speaking, there could very well be some time because usually, as a worst case, altcoins, they've been known to peak around 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event, again, based off of history. Now, if we do some basic math, you know, the last Bitcoin having event happened back in April. So 18 months from then is basically October of 2025, like next year. Now, again, things could happen a lot sooner. We just never truly know. But again, I think it showcases how there's still some time there when it comes to Excel to prove itself. So when people are panicking, saying, yeah, Excel's not at the price of, you know, $5 yet, all this type of stuff. Well, here's the thing. Again, there could very well be some more time. Not to mention, I'm not going to wait for AXL to go to the price of like, you know, $5 for me to FOMO into it. That'd be kind of crazy because you can only imagine the hypothetical gains lost along the way. I don't need confirmation to know that AXL could hypothetically do well. I've seen what Polkadot did, so I don't see why Axlar won't at least gain some attention. And you got to take into consideration, you know, even projects that are complete caca like Luna Classic, sometimes they pump for fun. You also take a look at Klima Dow. That even had a somewhat decent recovery, I would say. It eventually somewhat found a bottom, in my opinion. Also, you take a look at Litecoin, something that pretty much since the beginning I thought was kind of caca, even in 2021, experienced like massive growth. And even as of right now, it's still one of the biggest things out there. So when people like to say that, yeah, you know, Axlar is not going to do well, you know, AXL is going to go down in the gutter, all this type of stuff. When FOMU is like at fifth gear, so to speak, right? When there is full-on buying pressure, buying volume, sometimes people just don't care. Like, really. If something like Luna Classic, again, all these other projects, like, they pump, could you imagine AXL, something that actually has a good foundation? I mean, during this bull run, $25, I don't see why not. You take a look at the Bitcoin ETF, the Ethereum ETF, you know, the amount of enterprise adoption, it's just through the roof. So I think this bull run could be so special, but it's just a waiting game, really, at this point. It's just, again, waiting. That's it. And what am I going to do in the meantime? I'm not just going to stand there and be like, oh, yeah, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to accumulate AXL. So anytime I acquire income, just acquire more AXL, hold, and I just wait. That's it. And again, I'm never going all in. I'm just putting incremental amounts on a consistent basis because I think it's just a much more simple strategy for me. And I think AXL, Matt, it could very well shock the world during this bull run, at least hypothetically. Only time will tell, but $25, that wouldn't shock me at all. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's Malid the Captain, and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm on peace. Bye.